what is going on youtube family it is your girl ray back to you guys with another video as you guys can tell by the title of this video we're going to be talking about my transition into veganism the good the bad the ugly honestly everything i went through and the struggles with becoming a vegan and why i became a vegan if you're deciding if you want to become a vegan or become more plant-based and you don't know what the transition will be like and you're kind of afraid of making that decision i think this video may be perfect for you if you're interested in this video make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel as well as turn on your post notifications so that you'll be notified every single time i upload a video my transition to veganism has been about four years now and I come from a southern background. Uh, my family comes from New Orleans, Mississippi, Alabama. Like I have family in southern areas. So you can only imagine the type of food that I was raised on. Every single Sunday, we have Sunday dinner and a lot of the family would come over and we would eat pork chops, macaroni and cheese, mashed potatoes, gravy, cornbread and greens were like a staple in my house growing up and also kool-aid and sugary drinks that's all i knew growing up so as i got older i started to realize i just really didn't care for me it was more so of like it was on my plate i would eat it because it was there i would eat it because i knew that's what it was cooked and if i didn't have it i was gonna starve it was just more so of what we've done like what we all have done our parents have always put chicken in our face our parents have always put beef turkey pork all these types of things so it's more like a thing we do a thing and how we raise our children and how to eat but back then i i was so young i didn't understand how to communicate that instead of eating it so as i got older and i could make that decision for myself i had a friend that was vegetarian it was my first time being exposed to someone that didn't eat meat and I didn't understand it because it was kind of like what's going on here so it was very interesting for me and at that time I thought that was like child abuse like how could you really like deprive your child of meat like what's going on because I didn't know any better I started to adopt a healthier lifestyle with her and seeing how she ate so I kind of went vegetarian at that time for about and I was in my teens I want to say I went vegetarian roughly about maybe six months to a year went vegetarian and i thoroughly enjoyed it but after a while it was more so of like all right i tried it it's cool but meat was still being cooked at home and i didn't understand how to transition correctly into being a vegetarian i just stopped eating meat and i just started eating grains and things of that nature but i wasn't eating properly to be a vegetarian so after i tried being a vegetarian in my teens of course year go years go on and I put on a lot of weight. Um, a lot of it had to do with just being active, not incorporating enough vegetables into my diet, depression, anxiety, all these other things. Early 2017, I was hospitalized for a couple of days due to my health and my une unhealthy eating habits. By that time, I knew I had to change my life. Now, I did not go into that trying to be a vegetarian. I didn't even go into that transition to being vegetarian. But that was always a thought. So after I was hospitalized and I was discharged from the hospital, I knew I wanted to better my health. And I knew that meat was a big issue for me because around that time I was eating a lot of red meat. I was eating a lot of steak and I wasn't really raised on steak. I was mostly raised on chicken, turkey, and pork. Steak wasn't really a thing for me growing up. So when I got a little taste of it, I started eating it a little bit too much, too often. And when I tell you the weight just packed on, the weight just packed on. So after I was discharged and realized that I had eaten a lot of red meat at that time, I decided to just cut out red meat. Literally, I cut it out, I stopped eating red meat, and I was totally fine with that because again, I wasn't really raised on it. I didn't really have a close tie to eating red meat. So after that point, I started to realize that I was not eating enough vegetables. I was still eating out a lot, a whole lot. like. I didn't cook at home. I was eating pizza maybe two or three times out of the week. One or two boxes of Papa John's pizza by myself, literally. So if I wasn't eating pizza, I was eating burgers and fries. A lot of it would be chicken burgers. Sometimes I would eat beef burgers, but for the most part, it would be chicken burgers. And most of the times, those chicken burgers were fried. 
And of course, I had cheese on my burgers all the time. And I will always get a large fry. I've never really been big on drinking soda. I never really cared for soda, so that wasn't a big issue. But I would drink more juice than I would soda. So it was sugars from the fries, sugar from the drink, sugar from the burger, and whatever other sweet treat I may have. So you can only imagine six to seven days out of the week i was eating out i was eating fast food i was eating very unhealthy meals but i also still cut out beef so as time progressed i started to realize that i didn't want to eat out as much i felt really sluggish i felt really greasy and i know that sounds like a weird thing to say but if you know what i'm talking about if you know that feeling of just feeling greasy and just feeling just ew i just kind of felt like the oils and the grease that I was eating all the time was like dang near coming out of my pores. Like I just felt just greasy. I didn't feel good. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And I just didn't like the way that I was feeling. In order for me to transition to being healthier, I started to still eat out, but I would get grilled chicken sandwiches. And I would get small fries instead of having a large fry. Instead of having juice, I would do water. So even those small changes made a big difference because I was incorporating more water into my diet. I still had french fries, but I wasn't having as much french fries. And that's okay. Those small transitions that you don't think is very important are very important. So even having the grilled chicken sandwiches were a lot better because I was cutting out more fat, I was cutting out more sugar, I was cutting out more oils, I was cutting down, so that still helped with the transition. Instead of having pizza, I started to supplement that with having Subway sandwiches. So I would eat pizza maybe once out of the week, and those other two days that I would eat pizza, I would incorporate Subway. And when I would have Subway, I would have my, I think it was the rotisserie chicken and the turkey with a bunch of spinach. I never put iceberg lettuce on my sandwiches because if you know about iceberg lettuce, it's literally just water. It has hardly no nutritional value. So I would put a bunch of vegetables, spinach, onions, pepperoncinis, jalapenos, like I would put all the vegetables on there. And I would eat that sub throughout the day. So it would be one for lunch and then one for dinner. And for breakfast, I never really was a breakfast person, but I started to incorporate eating oatmeal in the morning. Again, those small transitions into having oats opposed to having some leftover pizza from the night is still a good transition. So as time went on, I started to realize I'm tired of eating chicken and turkey. So I started to incorporate seafood into my diet. So at that time, I started to realize that, okay, I'm eating a lot of chicken and turkey. And by that time, I realized, like, I don't really care for meat. It literally dawned on me, like, I, I'm eating this because I know this, but I don't want this. So I started to incorporate eating fish. And the fish that I would eat was tilapia, as well as catfish. Those are the only types of fish that I eat. I never liked salmon ever shrimp is disgusting <laughs> hey y'all may be upset about that but literally shrimp is the roaches of the ocean but i'm gonna let y'all sit on that because y'all eat it like it ain't no tomorrow and i never understood that however those are the only ones that i ate so like tilapia and catfish were the only ones i had so with my tilapia i would typically season with salt and pepper and then squeeze some lemon on top for the most part i will always grill my tilapia and at that time, I was eating canned vegetables. I don't eat canned vegetables anymore. So I would have my tilapia with the is it green bean, peas, and corn medley. I would have that. I would drain it really well. I would cook it, eat that on the side, and that would typically be my meal. Sometimes I would have like a Hawaiian roll on the side, but for the most part, that would be like my meal. And that would be my meal maybe two or three times out of the week, and then having Subway. So as you guys can see, I still had my meat with my veggies and I also incorporated fish because I wanted to become a vegetarian, but at that time I didn't know about veganism. I've heard about it, but I didn't know if that's something I wanted to do because my whole goal was just to stay a vegetarian. Because to me at that time, at that time veganism was just entirely too, it was entirely too strict for me. It wasn't as much information or as much uh, meal options as there are now that they were back then so again at this time I'm eating tilapia three days out of the week in the other four I'm having Subway 
And of course, guys, in the midst of that, that doesn't mean I didn't have pizza sometimes. That did not mean I did not have burgers sometimes, but they will literally be so minimal to the point where it was maybe once or twice out of the week that I would have pizza or a burger. And that was maybe because at that time I was like strictly Subway. Like I loved Subway. That you would always see me with a Subway bag in my hand. Like it was just that deep for me. So as time went on, I started to venture into eating more nuts because I was raised on nuts. I was raised on like walnuts and almonds and things of that nature, but it had been a while since I kind of ventured into that. So I started incorporating nuts. And if you don't know, nuts are really good in fats as well as protein. But at that time I didn't know, but I started to incorporate that. Again, small adjustments really did help. So at this time from switching from um, solely meat to eating Subway, I want to say it was about a year, maybe a year and a half. That's That was the transition time. So as time went on, I started to minimize how much meat I would have. And so by that time I was eating most, I was not even really a pescatarian i was mostly vegetarian opposed to being a pescatarian i was still eating fish around this time as well now at this time it was still kind of a gray area but i knew like i was so tired of eating meat one day i just said i don't want to eat meat anymore that included fish and that also included chicken now again although i made that decision in my mind doesn't mean i didn't slip up sometimes i definitely slipped up sometimes but it was very rare and for me at the time rare was maybe every three to four days that was rare for me because if you were eating meat every single day i feel like not having meat for three or four days was kind of like that's really good and i enjoyed that and at the time of me having meat sometimes when i tell you that i did not enjoy my food and i was just eating just to eat I was just like, what the heck am I eating? Like, why am I still eating meat? Like, I really just didn't like it. One day I was just like, okay, no more meat. I'm not having any more meat and I became a vegetarian. Well, being a vegetarian was a little bit more flexible for me. This transition from eating meat to being mostly uh, pescatarian at this time and only eating meat about three days out of the week, the transition, I didn't transition into pescatarian, so I didn't only just do fish, but there was a small window and the fish would be three, maybe two days out of the week and vegetarian would be the rest of the days out of the week. So maybe four to five days out of the week. And by that time, gardenia was out and it had probably already been out prior, but I discovered gardenia, Gardenian, excuse me, Gardenian patties. That was a staple, like Gardenian patties were the staple. Their wings, their patties, their strips. That was my staple as well as Morningstar. That helped me a lot to transition into being a vegetarian. And at that time, a lot of those patties from Gardenian as well as Morningstar were not vegan. They were solely just vegetarian and it was just easy for me. I would literally just go to the store, grab me a bag of um, vegetarian wings, get some barbecue sauce, and that's how I would eat most of the days. And I would usually have like a salad on the side, and that's usually how I ate. Although, and this was the thing for me, of course transitioning into uh, eating mostly plant-based options, a lot of those plant-based options have a lot of sugar and a lot of salt. And of course, at the time I didn't know, so I was excessively eating those things. Like I would have like three or four bags throughout the day of like the buffalo wings that they have or the spicy wings that they have. I love those so much, but I would eat those all day long. And sometimes I would go without eating vegetables because in my mind i thought like this is a wing like it's vegetarian it has like a bunch of vegetables inside of it no it doesn't it has a bunch of chemicals and a bunch of bad stuff inside of it but it helped me to transition of course i drank more water because i wasn't really fond of drinking sodas anyway and then juices i literally i think i i think i cut juices maybe um, the first year to almost none like i would have juice maybe twice a week maybe and that would only be a cup that was pretty much it so while i was vegetarian although i was having the gardenian patties as well as the morning star patties 
I saw myself eating a lot more junk food because I didn't know how to transition. My body was so out of whack. I did not have enough protein in my diet. My iron levels were really, really low. If you are a vegetarian or a vegan, you know, like sometimes the iron levels can be very, very low when transitioning. So you have to supplement the iron with iron tabs or you could just find your iron in your vegetables, but it'd be a lot of vegetables eaten throughout the day. So I saw myself eating like chips every single day. And I loved chips, period, regardless of the transition or not. But I was eating them so much every single day. It was ridiculous. And I would get like the big bags and I would have the Gardenian patties. And although in my mind I thought like, well, at least I'm not having meat. Like I'm eating healthy because I have these veggie patties no because i was counteracting that <laughs> although i was eating those things i still was eating very very bad and a lot of salt a lot of carbs a lot of sugar by having a bunch of chips i started to realize i'm having too much sugar <laughs> entirely too much sugar and around that time i started to see that veganism was a thing and I told myself that I would love to try being a vegan, but I wanna do it the right way. So instead of having as many of those veggie patties or those veggie wings that I would get from Gardenian or I would get from Morningstar, I started to incorporate having more vegan meals. So like cooking more vegan meals or actually I started to go to more vegan restaurants to try those vegan meals out. I would go to Trader Joe's, I would go to Sprouts, I would go to Whole Foods and find options that I can incorporate. Although I didn't know how to cook vegan or ve vegan meals at the time because now we have a lot of vegan recipes. We have a lot of vegan options. We have a lot of things that we can cook at home being vegan, but it wasn't as, ex as accessible back then and it wasn't as many delicious options as they are now. So I found myself going to those grocery stores to incorporate more vegan options into my diet. Now, a lot of those vegan options did have a lot more vegetables and, you know, seeing some, and I'm not even going to lie to you guys, when I started seeing those vegan options, they did not look too appetizing because it was stuff that I didn't eat. It was like raisins and it was like beans and I wasn't really used to eating beans like that. It was just a lot of things going on. It was like a lot of like vegetables that I've never touched in my life that was inside of these dishes. Like it was, it was wild. So I started to incorporate that a lot more into my diet, those more vegetable greens and more healthier vegan options opposed to having these vegetarian options. And maybe a year, maybe six months ago, I became full vegan. So here is where it got hard for me. I kind of skipped this step. I realized that while I was eating a lot of that dairy, I had a lot of eczema. I had like this huge, like huge, it was a really huge spot, um, eczema spot that I had on my leg for a long time. And I grew up having really bad eczema growing up and I never knew what the cause was and I never knew why I had so much mucus growing up. No one educated me on this no one told me that this is the reason why and i started to notice when i was vegetarian i was eating so much more dairy at that time because a lot of those vegetarian meals had milk it had cheese and it had eggs i started to see that once i became a vegetarian and eating a lot more dairy that my eczema started to flare up and i didn't know what was going on like why am i having a lot of flare-ups with my eczema why do I have a lot of mucus? Like every morning I will wake up and my nose would just be full of mucus. I know this is TMI, but this is just honestly. I would always have like mucus in my throat to where I have to like cough it up every single morning. And it would be so much mucus throughout the day. And I never understood why I had so much mucus. I didn't understand. At the time I wasn't educated on why I was having mucus as far as it coming from a cow. And y'all know the rest. If you guys don't know the rest, I probably will make a video about it. And I hated it. It was just, it really bothered me that I had these things going on. And my pH balance was off. Like, it was just a lot of things. My hormones were off. My boobs were always tender. I had lymph nodes swell up all the time. 
by being a vegetarian and eating a lot of those things and i noticed that my belly was always distended i noticed that i was highly constipated a lot of the times if i wasn't constipated i had very loose stool or a little to no stool it was just bad and so at the time that i wanted to transition into becoming a vegan i didn't know that these things would stop so once I made that decision to say I want to become a vegan or at least try it out, that was the toughest transition because a lot of you guys, along with myself, have, have and has had the hardest time cutting out dairy. Like, who doesn't love cheese? Who doesn't love regular ice cream? Who doesn't love cheese pizza, right? Those things are delicious and I don't miss them, but I remember how delicious they tasted. I didn't know the benefits of me cutting out cheese would be. I would have a lot more energy. My skin cleared up. I don't have eczema anymore. If I do have eczema, it's probably because I've eaten a little bit too much sugar and I notice that now. Since becoming a vegan, I've only had one eczema flare up. I feel so much better being vegan and Honestly, I would never go back. You guys always ask me, do I miss meat? Hell no. Do I miss dairy? Hell no. With all the vegan options I have, like I can have everything I want and not have to have dairy and not have to have meat. I don't have those cravings anymore because I've trained myself to still have what I want, just having it in a vegan option opposed to having it in a vegetarian option. And honestly, I would never go back. Now everything I just told you guys about my transition, you would literally have to think if being a vegan is actually the best option for you. Being a vegan has changed my life in so many ways. I'm much happier, I have much more energy. And I noticed when I was eating a lot of dairy and when I would have meat that I had the itis. And if y'all black folk watching this, y'all know exactly what the itis is. Y'all know what the itis is. The itis is when you get tired after a full meal. I can have a whole vegan meal right now and I am not tired after it. Because now I'm incorporating a lot more vegetables and a lot more protein into my diet. And I also live a healthier lifestyle with exercising. So is veganism right for you? You would have to choose if you are willing to go through the ups and the downs of being vegan. I understand now that veganism is such a big thing now and it's a lot of us, because I'm going to include myself, that's pushing the narrative for people to be a lot more healthier. There's some people that say, well, you shouldn't be so harsh to people and be a lot more kinder because then they will go, mm -mm. Mm -mm. And I give people harsh realities. Now, am I vegan to save the animals? I am not vegan to solely save the animals. The reason why I'm vegan is for health reasons. Now, do I believe in slaughtering animals for other things? No. But I can't get mad at the people that love meat. If you love meat, that's great. But there's other alternatives as well. But it's a lot healthier and also an animal is saved. Now there are some people that are going vegan right now because they feel a lot of pressure. Because they feel like this is the way to go and this is how I'm going to lose weight. I'm here to bust all of those myths. Just because you're a vegan does not mean you're going to lose a lot of weight. And you might be like, what? I thought veganism was about weight loss. Veganism is not about weight loss. Being a vegan is about incorporating a lot more healthier options into your diet and also living a healthier lifestyle overall. And although I'm vegan, I'm still transitioning because I'm starting to realize a lot of things that I was using that weren't really healthy. Um, it comes from reading a lot of my labels. It comes from knowing what those keywords are. I have been in the transition of switching a lot of my products in home cleaning products into a lot more healthier options opposed to having a lot of perfume and a lot of chemical options so i'm still on a transition as well veganism is not only about eating a certain way it's also about living a different lifestyle and transitioning to that lifestyle of what's better for the planet and what's better for the world so that is it for this video if you guys like this video make sure you go ahead and like comment and subscribe make sure you turn on your post notifications so that you'll be notified every single time i upload a video if you guys are interested in seeing another video from me and you guys have suggestions or requests make sure you go ahead and comment down below and i'll try my absolute best to go ahead and make a video on the topic that you are asking for that's it guys i will talk to you guys later peace